Get your 160k Og Vorbis on Spotify. Get, 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 get your 256 AAC on iTunes. Get, 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 get your lossless flack on Title. Well, if you're one of the two dozen people that has a Title subscription, that is. <laughs> If you're into music, it might seem like there are just way too many audio formats to choose from. Can't we all just use MP3? No! No, we can't. There's a very good reason for all of the madness. Different audio formats make things more optimized for different types of users. Electronic music artists, home theater enthusiasts, or just straight up bass heads. <laughs> Let's start by looking at common formats used by average listeners, MP3, AAC, and Vorbis. These all store audio using lossy compression, which means these formats are often defined by the fact that they discard some information from the original audio source. Well, hold on now. Is that like an MP3 of Don't Fear the Reaper doesn't include the cowbell? I gotta have more cowbell. Not exactly. You see, most people simply can't hear much of the information in the uncompressed audio files you'd find on a retail CD. We're talking sounds that are so low in volume, so high in pitch, or so close in time to other sounds that the vast, vast majority of people can hardly perceive them. So lossy formats just cut them out. Oh, and they also save space by using a different bitrate. You see, when a song gets digitally recorded in a studio, the recording equipment takes samples of the analog sound waves coming out of a guitar or a singer's mouth and stores them as digital bits, just standard ones and zeros. On an uncompressed CD, the audio you hear is typically stored at a bit rate of 1,411 kilobits per second. But lossy compression discards a lot of these bits to make the file often many times smaller. For example, a four minute uncompressed song that takes up about 42 megabytes would only be about eight megabytes as a relatively high quality 256 kilobits per second MP3. And although MP3 is probably the most familiar lossy format, others are widely used for different reasons, such as AAC, which pitches higher quality at lower bit rates due to a fancy compression algorithm, and Aug Vorbis, which is completely open source and patent free, unlike MP3. But some folks aren't satisfied with the level of quality you get with lossy audio especially audiophiles who want to get the most out of their high-end headphones and speakers. And instead they turn to formats like FLAC or ALAC, which offer lossless compression. These files contain all of the original audio data, but with smaller file sizes. If that sounds like magic, it's not. Lossless compression is accomplished by looking for ways to more efficiently store redundant data. So this string would be expressed this way instead. And by predicting what sound should come next, lossless codecs can store only the difference between the predicted data and the actual data, which takes up much less space. And because formats like FLAC and ALAC are specifically designed for audio, they can compress sound clips much more than general general purpose compression schemes like ZIP. In fact, a typical audio file with lossless compression will only take up about half as much space as an uncompressed equivalent. And if you're wondering about the difference between FLAC and ALAC, you'll need to use the latter if you want to listen to lossless music in iTunes. And yeah, that's about it. But there are also other lossless codecs like Dolby True HD and DTS HD Master Audio for both home theaters and commercial multiplexes that have proved popular with movie studios. So look out for these logos when you're out buying Blu-rays if you're a home theater enthusiast. Even more interesting is Dolby Atmos, which encodes each sound in a movie soundtrack spatially, meaning it can scale to a huge number of speakers because the audio is mapped in space instead of being coded for just one speaker. You can learn more about that right up here. But despite the popularity of compressed formats, keeping audio in uncompressed form does have its advantages. Uncompressed files stored in WAV or AF format are not only compatible across a huge range of devices because they undergo very minimal processing from the original audio signal, but they also contain all of the information that was originally converted from analog to digital. They're easier for audio editors and creators to fine tune as much as they'd like. All of that being said, 
At the end of the day, if you just like listening to music, pick a format that you think sounds good, or whatever the format the music already comes in, and be sure not to judge other people too harshly because their library is full of 128 kilobyte rips from YouTube. Blech. Racing Against the Clock as a freelancer? Challenging, yes, but with the growth of the internet, there's never been more opportunities for the self-employed. To meet this need, check out FreshBooks cloud accounting software, designed for the way you work. It is a simple and easy way to be more productive, organized, and most importantly, get paid quickly. Create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. Set up online payments with just a couple clicks and get paid up to four days faster. See when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. FreshBooks is offering a 30 day unrestricted free trial to our viewers. To claim it, go to freshbooks.com slash techwiki and enter techwiki in the how did you hear about us section. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, like it. If you just liked it, dislike it, get subscribed, hit the little bell to see all the videos on TechWiki, get subscribed again, uh, and then press it again so that you're actually subscribed. That would be three times resulting in a subscription unless you're already subscribed, then I would want you to press it a fourth time so that you would actually be subscribed. And I'll see you next time.